Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about what is on the CSCS exam. The NSCA CSCS exam is the gold standard in the field of strength and conditioning. Whether you're a personal trainer or a strength and conditioning coach or a sports physical therapist or some other similar profession, chances are you're studying for this exam to show a really high level of knowledge in the field. The exam is very challenging, so you wanna be able to study efficiently and that starts with knowing what's on the exam. I've passed the CSCS exam myself as well as made a lot of study videos to help other people pass the exam. And I've also ran a CSCS study group on Facebook for years now and watched a ton of people go through the process of studying and going on to pass the exam. And you are definitely welcome to join that study group on Facebook, I will link it in the description below. Okay, so let's talk about how this exam works. The exam is broken down into two sections. We have the scientific foundation section and the practical applied section. Depending on your background, one may be more challenging for you than the other. A lot of people who have a good personal training background or they've been working for a few years find it easier to do the practical applied section, whereas a lot of students who have a lot of academic experience, maybe an exercise science degree or something similar, but they haven't necessarily done a lot of hands-on practice, they often find the scientific foundations portion of the exam easier. So depending on your background, you may have to study for one section more than the other. The entire exam is multiple choice, and for each question, there's three answer choices, just A, B, and C. That doesn't make it easy though, they're usually really good answer choices, and it makes it really hard to actually decide which one's the correct answer. You do actually have to go to a testing center to take the exam. It is an international exam, so you could do this in other countries as well, but you will need to visit a testing center which has a computer there. They usually give you a whiteboard to actually take notes on, but it's a standard testing procedure, so where you're not just doing it online or something like that where you can cheat. You definitely have to go to a testing center and go through the exam where a proctor can kind of see what you're doing. This is really important for the integrity of the exam and therefore the integrity of the certification. So it is purposefully a very challenging exam that almost half of students fail as they take it the first time. For example, the pass rate is around 57%. And I've seen personally a lot of students who are really smart who studied the book and still didn't go on to pass because it is very detailed and very challenging. That said, hopefully this video helps you really understand what's on it and how to study best. So let's start by taking a look at the scientific foundations portion of the exam. What you can see is this is broken down into exercise science, sports psychology, and nutrition. Exercise science has 44 questions, sports psychology has 19 questions, and nutrition has 17 questions on the exam. There are also 15 non-scored questions, and this confuses some people. Don't worry about it too much. They just add 15 questions that may be added to the exam in the future, but you don't get points whether you get them right or wrong. This does make the scoring a little bit confusing because you do need a 70% to pass, but it's 70% of the scored questions. I wouldn't worry about that too much though. The only thing you need to worry about is getting the best score that you possibly can on the exam and studying the best way that you can. Because when you go to test day, there's no way to tell if a question is scored or unscored. So you really don't know anyway. So you might as well just try as hard as you can for all the questions and not worry too much about that. For this portion of the exam, you have an hour and a half. And then after that, they do give you a break between sections of the exam. So you can you know, walk out, get a snack, um, usually that is around 10 or 15 minutes or something like that. And then you go back to complete the other portion of the exam, which is a much longer section. So then you take the second part of the exam, the practical applied section. This is broken down into exercise technique, program design, organization administration, as well as testing and evaluation. You can see the question breakdown and the percentage from each category here. These are all multiple choice questions as well, though some of them will have videos or images. Specifically, the exam includes between 30 and 40 video or image questions. This could be about exercise technique, for example, pointing out an error that you see in an exercise or a cue that you would provide to an athlete, or it could be about spotting an exercise or about facility design and layout as well. So you do have to have a really good coaching eye for movements and how to perform these exercises with good attention to detail to do really well on these questions because they will get really specific on how you perform the exercise the correct way. A lot of that you can find in the CSCS textbook. So if you haven't already, make sure you get the Essentials of Strength Training and Conditioning textbook. This is actually the fourth edition, which is due for an update pretty soon, but right now it's the most current edition. Even when they update the edition of the book though, most of the information stays the same, but the most current edition will usually have a little bit more information. For example, when they went from the third to the fourth edition, they added more information in nutrition, in sports psychology, and some other things like that. Now, the exam isn't just on the book, it's also on current research, which does make it a little bit confusing because not every single question will be from this book. Obviously you could just study the book and do pretty well, especially if you learn the book really well, 
but if you can, it's also good to keep up with current research, which is something I do cover on this channel as well as in my CSCS study course, which is constantly updated with new material. For example, there was a new research article that recently came out since the publication of this book on change of direction biomechanics and the cueing and effective strategies for change of direction. So I covered that information, covered that research, and talk about that on a YouTube video as well as in my course to keep everybody up to date on the most current research. This is important because research is always changing and the field is evolving and the exam has to do that as well for this credential to stay relevant and important and meaningful. So if you do want updates as current research is posted, I do post those to my study group on Facebook. So make sure you join there and also follow along on Instagram as well. One thing I wanna mention that's really important is that most questions on the exam are not memorization based, meaning they're not on recall. Some are, but you can actually see in the full exam breakdown here from the NSCA that there's a certain portion of recall questions, but then the majority of questions are based on application and analysis of the information. So you have to know it deep enough that you can actually understand the wording of the question and not just memorize things. All of my study material that I create and all my practice questions reflect this and actually go into a deeper level of detail than just memorization. I don't think memorization tricks or hacks really work very well, especially not for this exam. So once you study for the exam, you read the book, maybe you signed up for other study material, but you feel like you're ready to take the exam, what do you do? Well, you actually sign up for a testing date, you go to a testing center and you complete the exam. And you can have a couple different results of that exam. Either you can pass the exam, get your CSCS certification and you're good. Or you could fail part of the exam. Hopefully this doesn't happen, but if it does, you only have to retake part of the exam. If you fail both sections, obviously you have to retake both, but if you just fail the scientific foundations and you pass the practical applied, then you would only have to retake the scientific foundations and then you would just have to pass that section within one year of when you pass the other section. And as long as you do that, then you would have both sections passed and you would earn your credential. A couple other important things to note is you do have to have a college degree to sit for the exam, or you could be in your final year of getting your degree and then sit for the exam during that final year, but it's at the completion of your degree that you would then be certified. Once you are certified, there is something else you have to think about, which is continuing education units. Every year that you're certified, you essentially need 20 hours of continuing education units. That can come from taking courses. For example, I have a course called Program Design 101, which is designed to help CSCS certified individuals really master program design and become a program design specialist. So if that's something you're interested in, once you're certified, you can sign up for that and get eight hours of continuing education units to maintain your certification. This is all displayed really well in the NSCA dashboard. So once you're certified, you'll have a login so you can log in and see how many units you actually need based on when you got certified and then when you need to recertify. So whenever you take a CEU course like Program Design 101, you'll get a certification of completion at the end, which will have a code that you can enter to the NSCA website so that way they know that you got those CEUs. But don't worry about that too much until you actually get certified. If you guys do have any questions about studying for the CSCS exam or anything else about it, go ahead and drop it in the comments below and I'd be happy to help. Make sure you join the study group on Facebook as well as check out all of my study resources and free blogs about the CSCS on themovementsystem.com. Subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.